He won't be though. He's not generally a rude person. You can get one fox that will kill a number of wallabies in a very, very short period of time over a couple of days. They were originally taken over to New Zealand by Governor Gray in the 1860s. It was, uh, I guess, something that was fairly common in that era for people to, to uh, set up a zoo, if you like. And then, I think it was in the 70s, it was actually discovered that the population on Kowau Island was the same genetic stock as what used to occur in South Australia. My mum used to be a masseuse. Mm -hmm. She used to have her own, she's got a, well, she had it. Oh, Give you the keys for. Yep. We needed our supervisor up here because every time he catches something, he gets cut. And what happened? Yeah, it's just it's just Another male patch in Good on the boys. Was that, was that all boys say about that? Yeah. What we do here, we use the, um, one of the characteristics of marsupials is that the young are born in a very, very immature state. They're born uh, roughly 30 days uh, from conception. So they've just got hind limb buds and their eyes are shut and their, uh, no fur on them and their ears are folded. So they're very, very immature and what we do is we when they're in that immature state, um, we transfer those young from their endangered mother into the pouch of a foster mother. One's been pulled last. Eight. You bet. Five and six. Probably close to seven weeks old. Yeah. So I'm getting a shot of it. The pouch isn't a sterile environment anyway, and these uh, these young are very very hardy. Uh, like you, when you when you first see them, you think, oh, struth, they um, they look very fragile, but uh, it's really that's really not the case at all. They're quite hardy. Uh, we don't lose pouch young uh, associated with the transfer process at all. And then we uh, hold the hold the teeth between gently between the uh, blades of one pair of forceps and slide into the young's mouth because there's actually four teeth in the pouch. So if you, so it's on, on the teeth again, and we just transfer the young into the pouch like that. Tuck it in. Bob's your uncle. The procedure takes about uh, two minutes. Uh, the young aren't uh, harmed at all and the adults aren't harmed at all and the adults, uh, the actual mothers, really probably not even aware that uh, the young's gone. Probably. Yeah. Still on the teeth. So this one's ready to go. So she can be woken up now. Using this technique we can get, uh, depending on the species, uh, somewhere between a three to six fold increase in the production of young. So instead of, in the mainland tamas, instead of uh, one young produced per year per female, we can get up to three young produced 
uh, per female per year. We have about a 75 to 80 percent success rate of young that are transferred that that uh, make it through to weaning, which is equal to or higher than what you get in the natural environment anyway. Well, without this procedure, the numbers of young being produced would be uh, a lot smaller. Um, we'd have to wait a lot longer and cost a lot more money uh, to maintain colonies of these animals while they slowly increased in number. Beautiful. Gilbert's Potteroos Australia's most endangered species. There's only about 30 of those left before they're extinct. Australia actually has the worst track record for extinctions of any country in the Western world. Do you want me to go around the other side? Uh, no, I can go around the other side. I've got a shot from here. Of the... This is just a really fantastic thing for all of South Australia. Uh, we're turning around 200 years of history where our small mammals have gone extinct ever since Europeans arrived in this land. And here we've got the wonderful opportunity to actually reintroduce something that was extinct back to its former range.